If your YouTube channel is not working, I'm gonna tell you what you need to test so that you can get it working, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Ah, that was so much less awkward, wasn't it? Okay, so I've worked with a lot of YouTube channels doing channel reviews, doing consulting and things like that. And what I've noticed is that for some channels, some things work and for other channels, other things work. And for some things, they're kind of blanket rules. And with the blanket rules, they can improve any channel that is lacking in some of these blanket rules. Doesn't matter what type of content it is. And then some of the other stuff, well, it's custom. And because of that, I'm gonna tell you some things that you can test to really make sure that you're doing all of the right things. Data doesn't lie. A lot of us will think that our content is great or a lot of us will think that, hey, you know, I'm doing it this particular way because this particular creator does it this way and it's working for them. But at the end of the day, the data that is around your channel is what you're ultimately going to lean on in terms of knowing what is working and what isn't working. So the things that I'm gonna to talk to you about in terms of testing testing, these are the things that you're going to test so that you can have a comparison so that you can make sure that you're making the right stuff for the right audience. At the very top of this list, of course, is your thumbnails. You know, a lot of us think that we make awesome thumbnails, but once you actually start relying on the data, well, in a lot of cases, the thumbnails might not be as good as we think they are. And because of that, it is extremely important that you test your thumbnails. So if you don't know how to test your thumbnails, you can actually do it inside of TubeBuddy. I'll have a link to them down in the description. But the idea is that instead of just putting up thumbnail and saying, okay, this is something that I'm going to rely on for the traffic that's gonna be coming to my videos. You can make alternate thumbnails and you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna test this thumbnail against this thumbnail and see which one the audience responds to best. Like I said a second ago, you can use TubeBuddy's A-B testing feature to do this, or you can do it the manual way, which is basically to where you write down your click-through rate on one thumbnail, and then you change that thumbnail, and then you wait a certain amount of time, and then you write down the click-through rate on that thumbnail, and you see which one ends up performing better. And then of course, in order to make that test valid, you need to switch it back to the original, and then you need to make sure that with that current placement in terms of suggested and search and all that stuff that you're pulling traffic from the same places and that those people are responding to it in the same way and so on. And it's gonna take a while. So that's why I recommend doing it with TubeBuddy just because it's easier and faster. Okay, laugh. Misha Patish, yeah? So I'm gonna put that as a cut in in one of my videos. The second thing that you can test is your presentation style. So a lot of us will think, hey, if we just get in front of the camera and we make videos, then that's, you know, that's my presentation. That's me doing my thing. But in reality, how you present on camera may or may not be for the specific audience that you are trying to target. Here's what I mean. If you're making content for older people and you're speaking like that guy from Micro Machines, you older people know what I'm talking about. If you're making content for older people and you're speaking really fast, well, in a lot of cases, that can turn off a lot of older people. So testing your presentation style, testing the speed at which you communicate, you know, maybe slowing things down a little bit or maybe even speeding things up a bit if you're trying to reach a younger audience, testing how it is that you're presenting your content can be really beneficial. And here's how you check to see what's working. All you do is you go into your audience retention reports and you compare the videos that you make with your normal style compare those with the videos that you make with the new style and experiment with a few different styles and see which particular style seems to get you the most audience retention. That means whichever the winner is, is going to tell you, hey, this particular style is what is working best for the particular audience that I'm reaching. Other things you can test with your presentation is you can test the tone, you can test the actual language that you're using. And what I mean by that is, when you are communicating in your videos, are you communicating from a place that's way up here that you know, you're like way over everybody's head or have you kind of toned everything down quite a bit to where the language that you're communicating with is easy for the masses to understand? All of these things matter. Another thing that you can test is how you're actually editing your video content in the first place. What music are you using? Is it a good fit for the people that are watching your videos? Experiment with different types of music. Experiment with the way that you're cutting your videos. Are you bouncing all over the place kind of like I do or are you just doing push zooms just to make it a little bit more toleratable. I don't think that's a word. Are you using graphics, no graphics, B-roll, actual photos for your B-roll or actual videos for your B-roll? Like all of these things create the whole pie for the video experience that your viewer is going to be watching. And testing your editing works the same exact way as testing your presentation. Once you start editing in a different way, you start keeping the ones that you normally do and then you start mixing in some different edits to see how people respond. You go to your audience retention reports and you see how people are responding to that new way that you're doing your edits. 
Video structure is another thing that you can test, and this one can really make a humongous difference. And just in case you don't know what video structure is, it's your basic format of your video. So let's say that, you know, in my case, I open my videos with a teaser saying this is what you're gonna get, and then I drop my intro, and then I have my call to action in the front where I welcome people to subscribe, and then I have the actual body content, and then I close out the video. Maybe I'll mix in like a comment call to action or a like call to action in there somewhere, but then I close out the video and then ask people to subscribe again. From working with a bunch of different channels, I can tell you that from the different types of content, the way people respond to different types of content, that particular structure isn't always a home run. Sometimes it takes getting right into the video. Video opens up, bam, coming in. This is the content that we're sharing. This is what it is that we're delivering. Some niches are okay and it doesn't affect the viewership at all when the video opens up and there's an intro at the beginning and then the content starts. Some niches are okay with that. However, most are not. So it's important that in your case that you're testing this stuff and that you're doing different variations just to see what your audience responds to the most. Same thing applies to asking for the subscribe at the beginning of the video. This is like a hot topic. I get asked about this all the time. Same thing applies to that because, you know, it all depends on how you're structuring that call to action in the front. For some content, it's not as welcome as it is in other content. In some content, people just don't respond to it. And in other types of content, it is like, it converts like crazy. So testing that stuff and using your audience retention reports to define what it is that works specifically for what it is that you're making and the people that are watching your videos is crucial. Another thing that you can test is your personality. Some people hold back a lot. Some people give it all they got. They have they just take the mask off and they just are them. Test it, see what works best for you. Like in my case, I've noticed that doing it this way to where I just go off of bullet points and use the information in my head, you know, that seems to work out better for my audience than sitting there writing a script out and going word for word off of the script. And I think that that is just because it allows me to just do me instead of trying to be this, hey, I'm Nick Nimmin. Welcome to my channel. You can also test other things like your background, change your background, change the colors in your background, change the entire background. If you shoot inside, try shooting a couple videos outside, see how people respond to those. And again, what works for one channel might not necessarily work with another channel. And if you have two channels, you can even test this between the two channels and you'll see this for yourself. Some stuff that you're gonna do on one, you're gonna apply that to this one and you're gonna be like, huh, that's weird, it's not even working over there. And in other cases, depending on the type of content and the audience for the two channels, you're gonna say, okay, well, I applied this here and it worked like a charm, I applied it there, it worked like a charm, glad I applied it over there, fantastic, both channels are rocking now. But at the end of the day, if your YouTube channel is not working, if you're not getting views, you're not getting subscribers, it's important that you test all of this stuff as much as possible. Yes, it's extra work, but you gotta do it. All of these things matter. And if you wanna learn more about growing your channel, making videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.